Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick video. Today's a little bit of a rough day, as you can see, probably in my face. I'm struggling a bit today. Um, everything's just kind of like spinning. Uh, I actually have uh, COVID, so I am fighting that. I have been fighting that for about two weeks now. I did get the emergency um, antiviral. I qualified for it because of my sepsis. Because if you guys remember, I'm also getting over sepsis pneumonia, um, which is called bacterium, <clears throat> which is the one that I had. Um, so my body has been through the ringer. It is like, it's a lot right now. <laughs> it's a lot, but, you know, I'm hooked up. I got my feeding tube going and my IV fluids. Um, got my Bible out and my journals, just reading my word and journaling, um, trying to make sure that I keep my head at the right space during this time. Um, we're also fasting at my church for 21 days. We're doing the Daniel fast, so I'm trying to also honor um, our fast while I'm doing this as well, <clears throat> which has been a little bit complicated, but I just believe that God's going to honor me for honoring him. He'll bless me. Um, The video probably won't be super long, probably like a really, really short one, but um, I just wanted to be honest with where I am with my journey and um, show you guys when I'm up, but also show you guys when I'm down um, and when it's like when I'm down. And today's kind of like a down day. It's definitely like a down day. Like I feel hard to keep my eyes open. Um, I just don't feel well. Um, but I'm doing everything I can so that I can stay home because I don't want to go to the hospital. Um, I don't want to be in the ER. Like, I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to deal with all of that. I just feel like I can fight this thing on my own at home. Um, I got my special anointing oil. Um, that I've been anointing myself with and, um, you know, just praying. I think it's going to work. I got my Lysol on my dresser. Tens of bottles of Lysol and Clorox wipes and masks and a bunch of other things. It's messy over here because that's my medicine little station right there. I've got to clean it up. I just um, hook myself up um, so it's got more stuff on it. I've got a little fix thing in here to help me. I also got my nebulizer, which is right there. And another little breathing thing from Vix, which is amazing. It's like, um, it's like a steamer. It's like super, super awesome. Like, I love this thing. It takes six minutes to heat up. <clears throat> it takes about six minutes to heat up. You unscrew it. Let me kind of show you. Hopefully you, just, you just like unscrew it. You put your water in here. You put it on. And then this thing. It's a little, one of those little fix things. I don't want to touch it. It smells amazing. And then, like, you can turn it up here or turn it down. Matter of fact, I'm actually going to use some because I need some. So, let me put some water in here. It'll help me. So, I'll actually give you guys a little show. Alexa, set six-minute timer. Alexa. She's being funky today. Alexa. Oh, yeah, I unplugged her <laughs> so she didn't wake up the baby. Forgot that. Gotta plug her in, guys. All right, so you pour your water in there, which I just did. Get it nice and secure, then you turn it on. Um, and you gotta wait six minutes, which is what it says on the little thing. So, can't really get up to turn Alexa on. Alea, I'm gonna get back up, my daughter. I'm gonna get a plug in my Alexa so I can set a timer. Um, so you set the timer, you turn it on, and you kind of let it steam. <clears throat> yeah. I need to break up some of that stuff in here. That's what I'm about to do. It. Can you come plug in my Alexa, please? I unplugged her because of the baby. I need to tell her to set a timer for me for this thing. I'm doing a vlog. Um. Yeah, I've got like tons of tissues as you can see. Got tissue over there. Well, that's my little thing that my fluid bag come in, but that's my prayer shawl and my prayer wall where I like to kneel. 
and there's tissue on the floor by it for if I need it. And the garbage is over there. Um, but that's what I utilize to like help me get through and you know especially when I'm having a hard time and it's just like very very overwhelming you know I like to pray I like to talk to the Lord and um just get clarity and get help and peace Alexa set six minute timer can you plug her Alexa set five minute timer well, she's thinking about it because she just got plugged back in. She's going in circles, so we'll see. Um, but anyway, I just like to pray and get clarity, get a little bit of help. Um, because sometimes it can be um sometimes it can be overwhelming. It's not really always peaches and roses. That's like not really true. Um, sometimes it is just really, really overwhelming. Um and I just have to like pray, especially whenever I'm coming from you know, I had the sepsis, unbeknownst to me, I had the infection from September to October. During the infection, I caught the flu and ended up in the hospital, I think. Did I end up in the hospital with the flu that time? No, that was RSV in June. But RSV in June, I'm from my um, nephew, and then I caught the flu in October while I was at my cousin's wedding. I was the maid of honor. And I had sepsis during that time. Then my organs started to shut down by... Thanksgiving, so I ended up being rushed to the hospital because I was almost dead. Which I'm glad I finally listened to my nurse. I'm gonna say, um, us as African American people, we don't like to go to the hospital. We don't like to go. And let me speak for myself. I don't like to go. I hate it. Even with all of this that I'm sick with, I do not like to go. Like if it's not like we're deaf, I'm not going. It can't make me. I'm not going because they like to keep me, and I don't like that. Um, that's that's just not really my thing. And I just don't like the hospital like at all I despise it um but it is a necessary evil I will say um like we need it when we need it we need it we need to go we need to get help um I'm learning to be better <clears throat> with going in because I absolutely hate the hospital I just don't trust them I just don't trust them like bottom line is I don't trust them they tell you anything and then they bill your insurance for anything and it's just like a whole lot and they don't do what they're supposed to do and then you got to go back it's just like a whole lot I've had a lot of bad experiences with the hospital I spent a lot of time in hospitals between children's and regular hospitals for me and my daughter because I'm also um, a caregiver I take care of my daughter she takes care of me I take care of her we got each other let me see if Alexa's open Alexa set three minute timer three minutes starting now she's working now um so there's that <laughs> so as i've been going through this COVID, i've been trying to like pay attention and recognize when i need more help and when i don't and um i have a super amazing doctor that um i could just message him on my chart so when it when i had the first couple days was like really really rough when i first got it like I didn't think I was going to survive. Like, it was really, really rough. It was hard to breathe. It was like the mucus was choking me. Like, I couldn't get it up and out. It was just, like, a lot. And then, I want to say maybe, like, two days ago, I started coughing up a little bit of blood as well as the mucus. But I know it was because I was coughing so hard because I could feel it. it would only do it every time I coughed hard. Like, the, the cough was, like, more aggressive. Then it would have a little, it would have some blood in it. Um, but this little antiviral, what's that box? This stuff actually does work. I do not like it because I don't like the taste or anything like that. Um, but it does help because I don't have the mucus choking me. My body just feels like crap. Like it really just feels like it's been through the ringer. Like it just feels bad. Really, really crummy. Like I, I'm tired pretty much all day. Like I'm sleepy. Um, my body just kind of aches. Um, <clears throat> my mouth, I have this nasty taste in my mouth. It's like the antiviral when I swallow it. It's like it's coming back up my throat. So it's like I taste it all day. So it's kind of horrible to, you know, eat the stuff that I am allowed to eat. Um, it's horrible. Just, ugh. It just doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste good with anything. Um, I tried a little bit of tea because I am allowed to have tea on this. Um, fast. I tried a little bit of tea to see if that would like lubricate my throat to kind of help with the coughing. Um, and I think it helped a little bit. <clears throat> my body just, 
Didn't want to see <laughs> pretty much. But it did help my throat a little bit. So, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Wins. But I will tell you what um, has been very awesome for me. My daughter has been taking it since we found out I was sick and she did not get sick. And she's been around me. She has not gotten sick. She's been taking this since the day I got sick. And I had two. This, um, this elderberry cold and flu. This right here. This is the truth. Okay. If you are dealing with COVID or a flu or something like that. If you start taking this on the first day, I promise you. It helps <clears throat> because it made, sorry, I'm wheezing a little bit. It's a little hard to catch my breath. I can feel the mucus stuck in the back of my throat. Um, it, my daughter has, it's like a homeopathic, as you can see. So for my medicine, people who don't really like medicine, it's more a homeopathic, a homeopathic medicine, but it also has zinc in it. So it's elderberry with zinc. It's, it's the truth. It is like pretty, pretty awesome. It really helped. Thank you, Alexa. Alexa off. Um, it's really helped. Alexa, stop. It's really helped. It's kept my daughter from getting sick. Like, she hasn't gotten sick at all. She's been around me. She's been taking care of me. She has not gotten sick because she's been taking this since the very first day. Like, when I woke up and my throat was scratchy, I started taking it, and so did she, just to keep her protected. She's been taking this. She's also been taking, like, she'll take this at night because it makes her sleepy. This makes her a little bit sleepy, and it also makes me sleepy. I don't know why. It doesn't say that it makes you sleepy on here, but it kind of does make you sleepy. So I would take it when you're ready to rest. Um, she's been taking this as well. Not sure if you can see it. And they're, um, zinc, um, cold therapy tabs. So she'll take the zinc tabs in the morning and then she'll take the elderberry at night. And that's really been helping her. It's also been helping me get better, um, with this as well. But this is ready. Let me show you how it go. So you see how it's like steamed and you have the different settings on each side. So you can get as much steam or as little steam as you want. You just put your face in here and this comes off for you to be able to clean it really easy. All three pieces come apart for you to be able to clean them. Sorry, give me one second. I'm trying to like get as much um, out of steam as possible because I can feel like a lot of the phlegm stuck in the back of my throat and it doesn't feel fun. Um, I have something called Addison's disease, um, where basically I don't produce cortisol, like, at all, so I need some help, so, um, with this, it has been messing with my Addison's disease, sending me in a crisis and stuff like that, which I hate going in a crisis, because some of them land me in the hospital, because I become incapacitated, and I'm not, I don't know what's going on, I'm, like, out, so, um, I've been trying to do everything I can in my power to um, work my systems at home. Utilize what I have so that that doesn't happen. Um, up my dose of medicine, up my steroids, which I did, because um, I do have to take steroids every day. That is, you know, part of my living. If I don't take them, I won't be alive. So there's certain ones that I have to take, and I have to take them every day. Like, it, I won't be here um, if not. So it's very, very um, imperative. I take them so and when I get sick or you know I have too much excitement or too much uh, stress I have to up those because it um it affects me if not it affects me very poorly it can send me into crisis very easy so I work with that um as best as I can but I noticed today I felt like off and spinning and things like that so I knew that I needed to kind of up those Especially since my kids started knowing that, noticing that my color was changing. Because that's the other thing with this. Like, my color will change. I'll get real pale or turn real yellow. And that's when, usually, you know I'm about to go into crisis. I need a bit more help. So, um, my daughter, I was on FaceTime with my daughter and she noticed. And I felt it, but I wasn't sure. Um, even after all these years with it, sometimes, you know, I just don't know. Like, I don't know whether it's the cold or... I had a sense of disease, like, I just, I really don't know what it is. Um, but, sorry guys, it's really hard to keep my eyes open. I'm not feeling the best. Um, but, um, once my daughter told me that, I came in and, you know, got myself together and got hooked up to both of my machines. Um, doing this and, uh, reading my word, getting some study time in and doing some journaling. And I thought I would just bring you guys in on this experience just to kind of see 
what I'm going through. Like, I, I thank you guys for your prayers and your support. I totally super appreciate it. Um, this is my birthday month. I'm not sure what I'm doing for my birthday. I wanted to go out of town, but with my body healing, I think it's best for me to stay closer to home. Um, so I'm going to try to find some fun things to do and make a weekend of it and try to do that for my birthday, hopefully. I'll actually be 39. And, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, how do I deal with this sickness as young as I am? Um, when you have, when you're faced with something like this, this type of adversity, you have to just deal. Like, there's nothing you can do. You can't pout or whine or cry about it because the situation is not going to change from you pouting or whining. Like, it's just not going to change. Um, so you kind of just got to deal and find a way to have a good life with it. Find a way to still enjoy life while you're dealing with it. And that's what I try to do. You know, some days are better than the, than others. Ooh, nice steam. Look at my face. That's a mess of me. And it feels good. Like that Vixen there, like, really opened, um, opened me up. So, I'm here for it. My sink just dropped. Um, I always keep a towel because I'm not utilizing that. I like to keep the towel by me. And after I do this, I'll um, do a breathing treatment to just kind of help open up my lungs a little more. And of course, I turned it off, but that's kind of how that goes. But it's like a like a steamer, like um, if your baby ever had a cold and you took him in the bathroom, close the door and try to get the steam. That's old school. That's my grandma. My mama taught me. Close the door to get the steam to help open up the baby's lungs to be able to breathe. Or put a cloth over their head and run hot water to try to get steam to help them breathe. That's kind of what that does. Like I said, it's a little fix thing. I got it at Walmart. I think it was like 40 bucks. Like, this thing is amazing. Um, I love it. It really, really comes through whenever um, I'm sick. It really helps because I'm um, being able to put the fix thing in there. I'm not putting a fix directly on me. I'm breathing it in so it's opening me up so I'm able to breathe more. Um, which I like and it helps whenever I take my breathing treatment because I'm like opened up and it gets right in there like it's supposed to and I can breathe better so but I will say like COVID is definitely hard whoever said it's not they're a straight liar um, coming from COVID and this is the first time that I've had it since it's been out like I've caught him in the last year I've been in the hospital two times for the flu I think I had A and B um, the one time they almost had to put me on a ventilator because it was so bad. I had RSV. Um, and I think I had the flu again. Yeah, I had the flu multiple times. Multiple times. I, I'm not, I can't even count. But I know I was at least hospitalized, I think, twice for it. Or once for the flu and once for RSV. I don't remember. I'm not 100% sure. And then within that same year, I was hospitalized with a sepsis. So... Um, 2022 was a year. <laughs> it was a year. I ain't trying to go back to them good. Mm -mm. And uh, I rang in the year with COVID. So that was fun. I didn't get to really, I didn't get to do anything. Not really. I didn't do anything. I actually sat on my couch in my robe with my daughter and uh, watched um, my church elevation service. And then I watched the ball drop. Then I came in my bed and just kind of chilled. Um, which was fine. That was my New Year's. It was quiet. It was peaceful. Fine for me. Um, yes, I wish I could have went out and been with my family, but I got to protect them and myself. I didn't want to get them sick and I didn't want to get sicker. So, you know, I needed to be in the house where I'm at. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of it. Not really any new updates as far as medical right now you know I did see my doctor but I saw him during COVID and he you know he had to prescribe me these antivirals um which I will say I don't like them me personally if I get COVID again I'm not taking an antiviral uh -uh. I'm just gonna make it through it because I felt like I was getting better and then once I took the antiviral I felt worse like honestly I felt a lot worse but it did help with the mucus, which nothing was touching that mucus. So I don't know. I'm like 50-50 on it. Like, I don't, it made my symptoms feel worse, like made me feel more sleepy, more tired, like more body aches and just all around crummy, just not feeling good. But it did help me to breathe where I struggled 
Like, it, it was bad. Before I had my doctor's appointment on either, it was Monday or Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday. We had to get a video appointment because of the COVID. Because I took an at-home test. And what ended up happening, why I took an at-home test was, um, at first, I thought it was just the flu. So did my family. We thought I was just having a flu. And I was, like, really, really sick. Like, I, I missed two whole days because I just slept. Literally, I didn't get up. I didn't do anything. I literally just slept because I couldn't breathe. Um, and we just thought it was the flu. And then I got up, um, and you guys know my dogs, you've seen them. I got up to go feed my dogs and I realized I couldn't smell anything because I put my head down to get their dog food. And usually it freaks me out because it smells so bad, but I couldn't smell. So I put my head in there, I kept smelling. I was like, uh oh, I might have COVID. And then I realized that I couldn't taste. I didn't even realize that I couldn't taste or smell. I was so sick. I didn't even realize it. Like I didn't recognize it at all. Like, I couldn't smell nothing. I mean, nothing. And we was trying everything to see if I could smell. I couldn't smell or taste anything. So, on Sunday, that prompted me to take an at-home test. And it was, like, really, really faint, but it was there. So, that's when I realized I was positive. Um, and I emailed my doctor. I let him know what was going on. Um, and they switched me to a video appointment. And, really, we just discussed my symptoms and how I was doing and... He um, got me the antiviral because I qualified for it. Because you have to qualify. Everybody doesn't even qualify to get this. That's the one thing that I found out too. Like you got to be um, super sick and have multiple problems to be able to get access to this. Um, because of my issues with this and the bacterium and a few other issues, I qualified. Which I knew I would uh, because of everything I've been through. I don't see why not. Um, and everything I'm still going through, like with my lungs and stuff like that, um, my lungs are an issue. They, well, they have been an issue. I'll say that not all the devil's laugh. They have been an issue in the past. So uh, we knew we needed some more help for me <clears throat> so that I can breathe on my own. So he called those in and I started those and it's only like a five day and it's like, um, there's one of the packets. The packets look like this. I have my last doses today. And then it says, like, morning, you got to take three pills. And it's, like, um, two different type of pills. And then the third pill is a different pill, but you got to take them all together. Um, and then at the night, it's the same thing. But it totals out to be, like, 400 milligrams of whatever this these little pills are. Um, but I have my last pack that I have to take tonight, which is my night dose. And then I'll be completely done with them. Which I'm glad because, like I said, it feels like the medicine is coming back up my throat. Like, I, that's all I can taste in my mouth. So, it's disgusting. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of what's going on. But, yeah, people, be safe. COVID is serious. Like, it's no joke. It's hard. That mucus, like, it's, it's, it's rough. It's really, really rough. It, like, mm, it, like, chokes you. <laughs> That's the best way that I can explain it. Like, it makes you feel like you're suffocating and it's so thick. Like, I've been coughing it and spitting it out as much as possible to get it out of my body. But it's, like, so thick. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Like I said, I've had RSV. I had the flu A. I had the flu B. Um, I had all that stuff. I had sepsis. Um, one of the bad kinds. Um, and I will say that COVID, out of all that stuff that I had, COVID was right up there with the sepsis. Like, it made me feel similar to the sepsis. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm still recovering from sepsis. Like, I'm still, I'm not really over it, and it takes a while to recover. So, I don't know if it made it worse because I'm in recovery from sepsis. I don't know. I can't say that. Um, but what I can say is, to me, with everything that I've been through, all the sicknesses that I have been through, like, it's to me, it's right up there. Like, it's it's just, it's, it's horrible. It's not fun. It's not fun. Like, the first day, like, I had the worst headache of my life. Like, I just, I had the worst headache. Like, it was horrible. I just wanted the headache to stop. And it wouldn't, like, I mean, I was crying to the Lord, pleading with the Lord just to be able to sleep because my head was rocking. Like, all them symptoms they talk about, oh, yeah, I got them all. The, the diarrhea, the headache nausea some vomiting um, face hurting the sinus the mucus 
no no ten no um taste buds no sense of taste no sense of smell all of that like even my ears was hurting so my balance has been off got the shakes like it had me shaking convulsively like it's been rough it's been rough my people it's been rough it's been rough um but it's no joke it's no joke. People need to really, really take it serious and protect yourself and their loved ones or loved ones that are sickly because it is definitely harder on our bodies. Not to say that it's not hard on um, anyone else's bodies, but when you're sickly and you have autoimmune diseases, COVID is hell. It's just pure hell. That's the best way that I can put it. And that's not even me cursing, but that's just, that's what it is. It's like, it's, it's nothing I've ever experienced before. Like I'm, I'm good off. <laughs> I don't ever want to get this again. Like if I could possibly get the shot, I would just to protect myself. But I can't get it because of my allergies. I'm not allowed to have it. But if I could, I would just because of after experiencing it and going through it and how bad it was. If there's something out there to make it a little bit easier, so it's not so bad, I would totally at least look into it and possibly try to protect myself and my loved ones. But that's my opinion, my take to each his own. You know, I'm not uh, destroying you on how you feel. Please don't go in my comments and destroy me. Because um, I don't play that. i am tell you right now. I'm clean. I'll block you. I'm not even going to entertain it. I'll just block you and pray to the Lord deal. That's where I'm at with it. Um, for me, this is my experience. This is what I'm going through. This is what I've been through. Um, I'm sorry if it offends you. Not really. I'm not really sorry. You don't have to watch the video. I try to be mean. But for my people who do love and support me and is praying, like, I totally appreciate it. I thank you guys for going on this journey with me. Um, being able to do these videos is very helpful. It's very healing. Um, it's very therapeutic for me. It really, really is. Um, and I like to be able to allow people to see kind of what I'm going through, like, what it's what it's like to do it as a single woman on your own i have adult children now so you know i'm glad that if i had to deal with this that my children are older this would have been rough if they if i would have had younger kids but i would have figured it out i mean i still had issues when they were younger um just with the brain tumor and the addison's disease like and a host of other issues um i had issues i spent a lot of time in, the, in and out of the hospital um, raising my kids lots and it's just been me and them um, like I said before I don't know if you guys know their father is deceased he was murdered um, it'll be 10 years in September that he's been gone um, so we've been figuring it out me and them right or that like we've been really really figuring it out and it's been tough because I can't replace their father nor am I trying to because um, I try to keep him alive for them you know I try to keep his memory alive for them as best as I can and it's totally hard being a parent that has to make all the decisions. That's not easy, whether you're a mom or dad. When you have to make all the decisions for your kids and you don't know whether you're making the right decisions, it's really, really, really hard. That's one of the reasons that I came back to Christ and um, got saved, got resaved was because I needed someone to teach me how to be able to raise young women and raise them the right way because I didn't want to mess up my kids and traumatize them. Not to say that I didn't have blunders. I had my kids young. I was 16 when I, when I got started. So I've had blunders, believe that. <laughs> big, big blunders. Um, but we've overcame them and we figured it out. We have a much better relationship, much better communication. Not perfect, working on it every day, still a struggle. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm learning because it's a new set of parenting when your kids become an adult. You, you, the switch flips. It's not you do this, you do that, da, da 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 It's okay, well, here's my opinion on this. I hope that you listen. And whatever you do is your choice because it is their choice at this point in time. So all you can do is pray. So it's just, it's different. <laughs> I'm adjusting. All my peoples out there know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Y'all got them young adult kids. You know what I'm saying, okay? I got 22, 20, and 19. And it's an adjustment. <laughs> it's, a, it's an adjustment. Um, but I'm here for it. I've been waiting for this adjustment for, for a long time. 
and I got some amazing kids with good heads on their shoulders and they really try to do the best that they can to take care of their mom so I'm here for it I'm here for it my baby is my ride or die she like she makes sure she come through she she's she be on it she don't play no games about a mama she be on it she be on me and on it she be making sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and I'm getting what I'm supposed to get and all of that stuff so I love her shout out Alea mommy loves you um but yeah that's kind of all I wanted to really talk about I'll definitely I'll make another video soon um please if you like this video please like share and subscribe uh, thank you again for coming on my journey um i really appreciate it god's favorite out i'll talk to you later crutchfield for life